What is the next biggest trend in not only crypto, but in the whole financial sector? This is important because if you can spot the new narrative early, you don't even need to pick the best projects as the whole sector will perform ultra well. After conducting detailed research and basically BlackRock telling the whole world, it's safe to say that LWA should be the next biggest thing that all these giants are eyeing on. So first thing first, what is LWA? LWAs are decentralized applications that allow people to turn real world assets like stocks, government bonds, real estate and commodities into tokens that can be traded on decentralized platforms. However, many of these assets are difficult to physically transfer or divide, and legal paperwork can be complex and cumbersome. Switching to a digital system like Bitcoin is a much better idea in this regard. Not only that, Tokenizing LWAs actually offer a plethora of benefits, such as lowering investment minimums, increasing assets through fractional ownership, enhancing trading of previously illiquid assets, providing transparency, and enabling automated ownership management. Well, that's indeed a long list of benefits and institutions are certainly eyeing this sector as billions of dollars are starting to flow in. Notable companies like Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, Deloitte are exploring digital asset tokenization by partnering with blockchain startup digital assets. German tech giant Siemens issued a digital bond worth 64 million on a public blockchain. JP Morgan executed its first live trade using tokenized versions of the Japanese yen on the Polygon blockchain. Well, that's a lot of big names at once, but Jemmy, after listening to you for like a good three minutes, what specifically are some of the projects that we could look out for? The first one on my list is one of the early adopters to include LWA in a strategic planning, and that is MakerDAO. You can use crypto to borrow crypto by combining loans with a stable currency. They are the issuer of the DAI stablecoin, which consists of a basket of assets, including ETH, USDC, and perhaps BTC, etc. They also have the native token called MKL, now, if you bought MKL a year ago, you would be making some very generous gains. This is because ever since the US started raising interest rate, MakerDAO has been coming up ways to back its DAI stablecoin with conventional assets like short-term US treasuries and corporate bonds. This is unusual, especially for a stablecoin, but has produced excellent results and the token has surged 55% in July alone. MakerDAO currently has a sizable 2.5 billion in traditional assets, or just over half of its overall holdings. Given that it doesn't charge interest on the DAI stablecoin, and that 10-year treasury yields are now hovering around 4%, MakerDAO is benefiting from an expanding net interest margin. Number two on my list is Maple Finance. Maple Finance serves as a platform that connects institutional borrowers with lenders in the DeFi ecosystem. The process involves three parties, including institutional borrowers seeking loans, DeFi participants acting as lenders, and pool delegates who underwrite these pools. Pool delegates play a crucial role in the system. They source potential institutional borrowers and perform thorough due diligence, including KYC and AML checks to ensure the suitability. Once approved, the pool delegates set up and manage the pools on Maple Finance. Lenders then review their available pools and decide where to invest the capital based on their risk preferences and the terms over in each pool. Once lenders contribute to the pools, approved borrowers can access the funds they need even without providing full collateral thanks to the oversight and approval of the pool delegates. The third one on my list is Centrifuge, which is one of the earliest DeFi protocols to venture into LWA. 
Centrifuge is also the technology provider behind lending protocol like MakerDAO and Aave. One of the key strengths is its unique lending approach. It empowers users and small to medium-sized businesses by using real property collateral to create crypto loans. Another thing that sets Centrifuge apart is its pioneering use of NFTs, which adds an extra layer of reliability and security to real-world assets during the lending process. Currently, Centrifuge has a total of 17 LWA asset pools. Centrifuge not only enhances DeFi's overall stability, but also address capital constraints faced by small and medium-sized businesses. Also, DeFi investors can now find a reliable and steady source of profit through Centrifuge, even amidst the unpredictable nature of the crypto market. Number four on my list is Ondo Finance, which is known for offering tokenized US treasuries on Ethereum and has recently expanded its product to the Polygon chain. As part of a strategic alliance, they have introduced the OUSG token, which represents BlackRock's short-term US government bond ETF natively on Polygon. They also plan to bring the upcoming yield generating stablecoin alternative called OMMF and a decentralized lending marketplace Flux Finance to Polygon pending governance approval. The demand for tokenized versions of traditional financial instruments like the US Treasuries is increasing among investors, especially since bond yields have surpassed rates in DeFi lending markets. However, don't just ape into these RWA projects because there's still a lot of risk involved. One risk of tokenization is that there might be unclear definitions of the cash flow obligations between the parties involved in these financial contracts. This could lead to problems similar to those seen in the 2008 financial crisis where cash flow obligations were not well defined. So it's important to represent both asset and liability sides in these tokens to ensure the financial instrument is complete. At the end of the day, it still comes down to having proper regulation. And I personally think with the advancement of technology and the gradual improvement of regulations, it's going to open up financial markets even more and bring innovative ways to deal with traditional assets liquidity. And guess what? Blockchain's transparency are going to make the whole financial ecosystem way more trustworthy. So I'm bright for the future. Don't know about you. So there you go, guys. That's my take on the RWA sector. Let us know if there are any projects you'd like us to know and perhaps we could include in our next video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more similar content like this. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more regular updates and I'll see you guys in the next one.